back and let's play a game called Fact or Fiction. Hey, Dominique Foxworth, if I said the Chiefs are going to be the one seed in the AFC, is that fact or fiction? I'll go with fact. They're playing really well offensively right now, even though it's not as explosive as we remember it with Tyreek Hill. It's still incredibly efficient, unstoppable, and that defense, uh, it makes plays when they need to. They don't need that many because it seems like stopping Patrick Mahomes is as difficult as it ever was. So, yeah, I think they hold on to the one seed. Jeremy, if I said the Giants are going to win the NFC East, is that fact or fiction? That's fiction, but it, pain, it pains <laughs> me to say that because what they're doing is tremendous. I mean, Daniel Jones, no interceptions the last six games. Saquon Barkley might get 1,700 yards. Brian Dable done an awesome job. They are accidental winners this year. They did not expect this, but I got Philly being a little stronger, a little more of a complete team. And, and then that does bring us to Philly. Canty, if, if we were to say the Eagles' fatal flaw was exposed on Monday night, would that be fact or fiction? That's fact. They can't stop the run by success rate. They have the worst rush defense in the last 15 years, G, and it got exacerbated with the Jordan Davis injury. He's been out since that Pittsburgh game. The last two games against the Texans, against the Washington Commanders, they allowed over 150 yards rushing in each of those ball games. That's a problem for the Philadelphia Eagles. They got mauled. It wasn't just inside, outside zone. It was hard double teams, and it was gap blocking schemes. At one point, the offensive line for the Commanders had Fletcher Cox playing safety. Mm -hmm. It was bad. When you let a team rush the ball for 50 times, that's a problem. Yeah, they, they had injury added to the insult of that game the other night as well. Dallas Goddard, I assume you've heard right now, their outstanding tight end to shoulder injury. We don't know exactly how long he'll be out, but they say it will be an extended period of time. So, is that the Eagles' fatal flaw? No, it doesn't matter. I hate to offend your old-school football sensibilities. However, the fact of the matter is, in modern football, you don't lose, like, games by being, not being able to stop the run. That game that they lost to Washington was not because they stopped the runners, because they had three uncharacteristic turnovers. That's why they lost. They destroyed the Texans, even though they couldn't stop the run. The fact of the matter is, they are good at what you need to be good at. They are good at stopping big plays. They have a 3% uh, explosive play rate, which is the lowest in the league. That's what matters. If they give up a six, seven yard, eight yard run, it sucks. Yeah, you'd love to be able to stop everything. But more importantly is they have a productive offense and a defense that does not give up big plays. So if you have to be weak at something, that's where you want to be weak. So Nanique said to me in the meeting this morning, in the modern NFL, it's not about stopping the run. It's about not giving up big plays. Now you might want to slide a little closer oh, to me because yeah. I think <laughs> the old, you might get mad at that. What do you think? No, first of all, that was a close game between the Texans. I mean, it was one possession into late in the third quarter. So yeah. let's just say it shouldn't have been that close based on the talent level of the two teams. Second problem is it's hard for your defense not to give up big plays when they're on the field twice as much as the off opposing offense or as your offense is. 81 plays that defense was on the field for okay. on Monday night. 47 plays for the Philadelphia Eagles offense. How can you expect your defense not so to give up big they plays? They did double them up on time of so possession. The, the he's of, right. The part of the reason that that happened was because the Eagles' drives got cut short by terrible turnovers. The issue was not with them not being able to stop the run. The issue was with them having weird, uncharacteristic turnovers. Yes, you'd love to be able to stop the run. You'd love to be able to stop everything, but you can't. <laughs> like, at some point, you have to accept that you might be a little weak in certain areas, and they are good in the areas that matter. This is not a fatal flaw. And no one walked away from that game thinking that the Eagles, that Washington was better. We all thought that Washington should have lost that game, but the Eagles, they, the refs missed the face mask call. Uh, A.J. Brown tipped the ball to the defender. Dallas Goddard fumbled, and then there was that bad roughing the passer call. Like, there were a lot of fluke occurrences, and the Eagles still had a chance to win. Nick, help me out here, because you're I talking you. about the, the turn Turnovers and that being the reason why they lost are the turnovers the reason why the Eagles defense allowed a 13 play drive a 12 play drive a 16 play drive a 14 play drive I mean at some point your defense has to be able to get off the field okay, and if you so can't if, stop the run okay, cool. then that's not going to happen yeah, right. cool cool that's cool. not going to happen so they were 12 or 21 that's on third down for the commanders I, that ain't got you. nothing to do with turnovers I'm with you that would be nice it'd be nice to stop everything but what you, you had not five going, double this digit is, play this drives is, this is the modern NFL if you want to 2001 Ravens, I'm sorry. No one's winning Super Bowls like that anymore. You're not going to completely dominate a team and have them get nothing. Like, if you think the long drives are a problem, but I think chances are, if, if teams have to execute 13 plays in a row every time that they score the ball, they're going to blow it every now and then. That's a much better strategy. Like, all most, most
modern NFL defenses do that. They want to protect the big play and force you to try to be mistake-free the entire time. And with the offense that they have, the way Jalen Hurts is playing, they're going to score more points than your opposing team in most cases if you don't have these random fluke turnovers. That, that was an even better debate. We knew this was going to be a debate this morning. That was even better than we had anticipated. Where do you fall in all of this? What, what is the, the sense the right around side. the league about all of this? Which is <laughs> the, the right, right side? Uh, yeah, teams I talked to are not sold on the Eagles. I mean, they're torn. Some seem as a contender, but some say, look, they like San Francisco a little better. Feel like they have a little more firepower. Jalen Hurts is a guy that they feel like if you get in the playoffs, he could struggle, that he benefits from the <laughs> scheme on, more than on. having to get I'm it done sorry. in the pocket. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So some teams are not sold. They like the 49ers because the quarterback position and Philly is not strong. I can't. Oh, I no. can't. It's too much. I'm actually it's too much. Right. Stress I'm actually with him on that one. I'm done with this. <laughs> We're gonna have to I talk. retire. <laughs> We're going to talk Neek into coming back as the program continues. Why are In the you meantime, me? someone tell me Heather and Paul are ready. Oh, they are. Good news. Let's go. College football. Your updated playoff rankings. The top five remaining the same. Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, TCU, Tennessee. LSU moves up to number six. USC is seven. Alabama is eight. But as we have discussed before, they have basically no chance to work their way back into this thing. Uh, and you see the rest of the group behind them. Heather back with us here. And Paul, we will uh, welcome you for the first time this morning. What was your number one takeaway from what the messages the committee sent last night? The committee likes USC, especially what they have in front of them, Greeny. It's been said before, but they have three big games. And should they win all three, including UCLA this Saturday night at the Rose Bowl, they very well may, may be knocking on the door of a playoff berth. Yeah, and that's, Heather brought that up earlier as well. So that, that is the pressure point right there. Watch what USC does this weekend. The, the hopes of the entire Pac-12 and maybe of a second SEC team getting in hang in the balance. In the meantime, Heather and I prepared a little exercise here. As we look at where everything shapes up these last few weeks, Heather, what is going to cause the committee its biggest headache as we go forward? LSU winning the SEC. That's because they would be the first two-loss team in the college football playoff. But think about this. They beat Georgia, right? What do you do with Georgia? Georgia's sitting there with a win against Tennessee, which at the time was the committee's number one team. But wait a minute. What do you do with Tennessee, which beat LSU in Baton Rouge? 40-13. to 13, They hammered them. So you've got three of those SEC teams. What do you do? There's undefeated TCU. It's that is just the worst thing for them. That's the headache, exactly. Because yeah. assume we have an unbeaten Big Ten champ, whichever Ohio State, Michigan, and TCU wins out, and now you find yourself in that conundrum. How do they handle that, Paul? If it happens, well, I, I think at that point uh, you, you start wondering where where does everyone go, and I think what happens is TCU is going to work its way in. TCU controls its own destiny. Tennessee is the wild card, though, and, and as much as we want to push USC, Greeny, don't forget Tennessee won by 27, as Heather pointed out, at Baton Rouge. So L LSU is, 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 is really an interesting card right there. They still need to win at A&M. That's important because if they don't win there in a week and a half, and I don't know why they won't, A&M's lost seven games after being the preseason number six team, uh, that they, they changed the direction of everything. But Tennessee, I think it could come down to Tennessee and USC because Michigan, should it lose to Ohio State, I think is going to go bye-bye. All right, and so let's get into that because here, that when I asked you what is the hardest decision ultimately the committee is going to have to make, that's where it goes. Yeah, to take a deeper dive onto what Paul's saying about Tennessee, I'll take you inside the selection committee meeting room because their protocol states that that team that does.